<laughs> it's Father's Day, so we can't proceed without giving thanks to our mighty Father, who is the Father of everything. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I can't hear you. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and deliver us from our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And deliver us from the temptation, and deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Got that. Okay. Isn't it beautiful today? Fantastic. Jay, beautiful, all the children earlier on. In fact, when I saw Chase and all the other kids up there, they were, you know, giving a little testimony about their fathers and the different examples of their experiences. Not necessarily theirs, but they performed the, the characters they were playing. Some fathers were there, some were missing. And I guess if we as fathers were to go to God today and say, God, you know, can you give us an interim report on how we are proceeding and how we've done so far as fathers? And what would he say? You know, some of us may feel confident he may give us a, a glory report. But if God turned to us and said, well, actually, you know, yes, your little nuclear unit is very good. Your children are going to university. They fear the Lord. They behave well. They conduct themselves well in company and they're a credit to you. But if I look at the community, then we fail. Because we're not just responsible for our own children. We should be responsible for all the children. So, that we have to reach out and export what we have in Micah and other churches around and take it to the community. And then, as a father, because there's no replacement for a good father, he's worth his weight in gold, if I say so myself. Not saying that I am one, but I'm striving to be. And we're all making improvements day by day. Yes. And anyway, uh, I just want to say, I want to use the example from Scripture that Jesus used as the prodigal son. And I think if we were more like the prodigal son's father, that's why I like the prodigal son in Scripture, because it, it's about the father as well as the son, isn't it? You know, and it talks about the son, who was the youngest son and wanted his inheritance now. Uh, if I remember earlier, I think Bertha was talking about, we thought we knew a better way. And sometimes children think they know the best way and unfortunately they don't have the experience that, that the elders have so you know even though we try to guide them they may not take the, the guidance in the right way and feel that they need to rebel against it. Well the prodigal son was an example of this and prodigal means wasteful and extravagant and he certainly was that. So he demanded his inheritance now, he wanted it now against his father's wishes, his father gave it to him. He took the money went away to far off lands and indulged in licentious behavior and wild living, wasted the money and became destitute and took a job as a swine herd. Can you imagine being a swine herd? This is the lowest job you could get. Feeding the pigs and thought, how have I come to this? That now he even envies the pigs their food. And he thought of his master, his father and his father's servants who had Abundance. His father's servants had bread in abundance that he couldn't even reach for. And he thought, I will throw myself upon the mercy of my father. Go back and ask for forgiveness. And he got up, got and touched him, and he made him see the error of his ways. Probably thought what we thought sometimes as growing up, you know, that was right, you know. <laughs> I wish I'd listened to what he had said. And that's why probably his thoughts were at the time. So he took himself up and went back and said, um, these are his words, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare and I'm dying with hunger? I will go to my father and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. So he sees the error of his ways and no longer thought he was worthy to be a son but wanted to be a servant. <laughs> well, God had a surprise for him. Because he took himself off and went to find his father. But while he was still far off, sorry. Mm. 
Uh, Judas would have him, actually, he's asking. <laughs> While he was still up, the father saw him. And I thought to myself, how did the father see him? He was looking for him day by day, every month, every year. He was missing. His father was looking for him, unbeknown to him. And his father fell upon him. And kissed him before he could even give him excuses for sorry father, but he didn't want to hear that. He said, I love you, son. Come home. And the son, <laughs> you know, sometimes we have siblings, but you know, they don't understand. The other son who was there, you know, he didn't understand why. His father went there, dressed him in fine robes, bring fine sandals, hold a feast, slaughtered a, you know, the fat, fat the calf for him. And his father said, you know, son, dad, haven't I, behold, all these years I've served you and I've never disobeyed a commandment. But you never gave me a go, but I might celebrate with my friends. But when this your son came, who has devoured your living with prostitutes. You killed the fat calf for him. Well, the dad said, well, son, it was appropriate to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead. Yes. That's a lie. Yes. Amen. He was lost and is found. Well, we need to reach out to those who are lost yes. in the community, Amen. as fathers, as parents, and then do as the prodigal father's son did. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> prodigal son's father did reach out and touch them because they are lost yes. and need to be found. Yes. And just to wind it up, this, uh, this message, I just want to say that Jesus was an obedient son. Jesus spoke these words, whatsoever I hear, that shall I speak. Whatsoever the Father commanded me, that shall I do. And to the children I say, you know, at the end of the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus closed it by saying, Whoever hears these words of mine and does them shall be likened to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Yes. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Yes. And fathers, we are the rock that must stand yes. firm. Yes. Amen. Amen.